I hear you. You're screaming. Stop yelling at me. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Mike MGTV. <laughs> okay, listen. I'm so glad you guys are liking watching me react to other bartenders on the internet. But there's one person that you all unanimously want me to talk about. Okay, I see it. I see it, I have eyes. Everyone wants me to check out How to Drink on YouTube. Like, I don't know who that is. I know who they are. I haven't really watched their content. So I am excited to do that today. But not only that, I'm gonna try to make their drink. Because I'm pretty sure they have two fall Thanksgiving themed cocktails. And if he's anything like I think he's gonna be, they should taste great and be easy to make. So I'll react to him and the process of him making the drink and I'll actually make the drink. I don't do this for everybody. Just the people I wanna, you know, impress. Just the people that I already know are better than me. <laughs> because if I already know the drink is gonna be good, of course I wanna try it. So that's what we're doing today. Before we get into it, let me remind you guys now to subscribe if you haven't. My name is Mike, I'm a globally described bartender, reality TV trash, excommunicated Jersey boy who likes to drink to forget everything he just said. Let's do it! I got a megaphone. I even came out by the bar to do this because this is one of the first episodes of Bartender Tries. So I came by the bar for easy access. All right, so let's check him out. So the first drink we're gonna react to is his Thanksgiving cobbler. Gobble gobble, bitch, let's go. I'm Greg and I have never been a professional bartender. I've never... What? Hold on, what? Hold on, what? Are we reacting to somebody with enough humility to admit that they don't know fully what they're doing? They just know what they're talking about when it comes to drinks because they like to drink? Oh, <gasps> they're coming for my gig. Greg, you're already getting me excited. I've never even had a job in a bar. I don't worry too much about precision and technique because at the end of the day, if the drink you like is in the glass, you did it right. I gotta go. Give me this. Why did it take me so long to find out about this man? This whole time I thought I was original. Apparently not. Oh my, now I feel validated. If Greg agrees with me, now I feel like I know what I'm talking about. You don't have to know all the fancy shit. You don't have to think too much about it. At the end of the day, as long as the drink tastes good and you're happy, then shut the fuck up. Jesus Christ, I already love him. I wanna drink with him. Guys, <laughs> girls, tell him Mike MGTV said, hi. <laughs> This recipe is very similar to a Floridora uh, made imperial style, but we're making some tweaks. I don't even know what a Floridora is. I am the worst bartender in the entire world. Hold on, hold on real quick. I'm gonna pretend like someone just ordered a Floridora. Um, sure, we don't have everything here. I have to run in the back real quick to find it. Floridora cocktail. All right, a Floridora cocktail usually has gin, lime juice, raspberry syrup, ginger ale, and raspberries as a garnish. Sounds lovely. How are we gonna make this a Thanksgiving style? So I'm gonna start by pouring a quarter ounce of gum syrup into my small tin. If you like it sweeter, you can go up to a half an ounce. I love that he doesn't make his drinks too sweet. Even if you like your drink sweet, he's right. You don't need more than half an ounce. I see these kids on TikTok using sweet liquor with sweet soda and a full ounce of simple syrup. It makes me want to shit myself. I am attracted to this man. I have some fresh cranberries. I'm just going to take a good handful, you know, 10 or 12 of these. I love that he's about to model them instead of just using cranberry juice. Oh my God. There's nothing wrong with cranberry juice, but for this, the cranberry juice would overpower it. We want just enough flavor from the cranberry to complement the overall drink. I'm getting turned on. <laughs> Give it a couple of presses. Oh my God. And they really want to pop, which is fun. We're gonna... I like felt that in my colon. We're going to add in one and a half ounces of our brandy. Great. This is a lot like a Florador, which is named for a 1890s musical that was about showgirls, wild, party, sexy time. I'll give you all of that, daddy. And this is a drink that I would double strain because of the bits of fruit pulp from the cranberries. Do I have a strainer? I have to have a strainer. I know I bought one, but I lose everything I touch. I would double strain because of the bits of fruit pulp from the cranberries. Oh my God, that looks so good. Now we top it with champagne. Uh, this isn't a very expensive champagne. I think I got this for $7. It doesn't need to be. If you're just topping a cocktail with champagne, you don't need to get expensive champagne. People in my comments love to point out that I use cheap champagne when I'm just pouring it on top of a cocktail. What do you think I am, the James Charles of alcohol? It's just gonna make your cocktail sparkling. Don't waste good champagne as a topper. It is, it is it's not even champagne. This is just a uh, French sparkling wine. And again, it doesn't need to be. You're just using it to make the drink bubbly. And then I'm, I'm gonna just wait for that to fizz off. Look at it. Look at it. I wanna lick it. 
It looks so good. I'm so excited. Float a few cranberries on the top because they float. It's the holidays. We okay. Can get silly with it. We would, can get silly with it. I would put a little rosemary in there. Let's Presentation go. is important. <laughs> I'm just, I'm li literally, I'm gonna say yes to whatever the fuck this man tells me. Well, this drink is very good. I bet. Let's fucking make it. I'm gonna try to be professional as fuck for Greg. <laughs> I even got a cutting board. I got a cutting board, Greg. Oh, this is gonna be great. Okay. I love to sing about the moon and the June and the spring. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our cranberries and add them into our shaker because then we're gonna muddle them. And again, we're doing this instead of using cranberry juice because cranberry juice is very sweet and very strong and it would probably overpower the cocktail. This is more of a light cranberry flavor. And it's fresh, so. Oh, fuck, that's satisfying as shit! Oh, fuck yes. Y'all hear that shit? This is all for you, Greg. It's all for you. <laughs> you always start off slow with a little bit of a twist, and then when it's nice and easy. I need ice! I even brought the good cognac. That's right, I'm a fancy bitch. I have this thing, this decanter. I don't know, the rich guys, they drink out of those, right? <laughs> ice! A quarter ounce of simple syrup. Quarter ounce. And 1.5 ounces of cognac. Am I gonna use that fucking measuring tool? I don't wanna. My blood will boil. It'll go against everything I stand for. But for Greg, I'll, I'll do it. Honestly, the real reason I'm doing it is because this is no longer in a bottle. If it was, I would just put my pour spout in it and hold it upside down for a three count. But it's fine, it's fine. We're gonna swallow our pride. We're gonna do it Greg's way. See how long this takes. See how much longer this takes to do? Annoying. And you gotta flip it, you know, the smaller side, and then you gotta put this in the fucking washing machine. Uh. Wow, okay, great job. Thank you, decanter. I'm putting you away before I break you. He kept calling this a Floridora. I feel like this is just more of a cognac old fashioned with cranberries in it. Do not question Greg. Do what he says. Okay. Oh, it's pretty. It's so pretty, it's pink. Look at her. Now, Greg didn't put ice in the cocktail. We're gonna listen to Greg. We do need that strainer though. Where the fuck did I put that strainer? I know, I bought it. Where did it go? Okay, so I don't know where my strainer is, but I can do this. I'm gonna harness my veg... There's a fly in my simple syrup. Get out of here, get out of here, you stupid fly. I'm gonna harness all my bartender powers to make sure that none of the cranberry pulp gets in this bitch. You don't need to double strain it. We don't need to double strain it. I am a globally disgraced televised bartender who can do this. Or at least I hope so, let's find out. No, I already fucked up. <laughs> well, let's do this, hold on. Get the first batch out like this. Jesus Christ. Okay, yeah, I see what you're talking about. There's shit in it. Hold on. Let me tell you something. I will do this. Everybody shut up, okay? Shut up. Just shut up. Shut the fuck up. There we go, baby, motherfucker. Look, we're doing it. Okay, there, it was strained. You know what else is strained? My mind. I'm exhausted. All right, what's next? You're gonna top this off with champagne. I'm using cheap champagne because why would you waste good champagne on this? That would be a waste of money and good champagne. Good champagne you drink by itself. Fucking kids out there getting expensive shit and not knowing what to do with it. It's like getting a Rolls Royce and driving it yourself. You need a driver for a Rolls Royce. Okay. Bitch, are you watching? Cause this is the sexy part. It fizzled over in his video too. It fizzled over in his video too. I'm just doing what he did in his video. Okay, now it's time to float on some cranberries. We're gonna get silly with it, as Greg said. We're getting silly with it. I'm gonna do three because I don't want too much shit floating around in there. That's cute as fuck. And finally, we're gonna garnish it with some rosemary. Oh, it smells really good. Fucking love rosemary. All right, bitch, let's go. Oh my God. Girls, look how fancy that is. <laughs> look, I'll show y'all. You can tell me you don't think I know what I'm doing, but motherfucker, look at that shit. For anybody who thinks I don't know what I'm doing, Eat my ass. That is so good. That is light, that is flavorful, that is refreshing. It's bubbly and pleasurable. You don't even need any ice. The rosemary is great because when you take a sip of the drink, you really get a good sense of smell as well, which adds to the overall experience. I've learned, I'm learning. And you really taste the cognac and subtleness of the cranberry. I I'm sounding like one of these people. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh my God. I could chug this whole thing right now. I am so glad I strained it though. I didn't notice how important that would be until I realized that there wasn't ice in this. Otherwise the pulp would be getting all in my mouth. So Greg was right. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right. What's next, Greg? <laughs> okay, I think we could do one more and he has a spiked cider recipe. I think this kind of drink can go longer than just the fall and Thanksgiving. Spiked cider, I could drink throughout all winter. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy oh, Thanksgiving, God. happy Thanksgiving. Greg, no, Gre happy Thanksgiving to you too, Greg. I'm just flirting. I'm just flirting at this point. Gobble, gobble. Gobble, gobble. Ooh. 
I'll gobble. I'll gobble that guy. Go Stop. Stop. He does not want you. <laughs> but he's a funny, relaxed guy with a beard who doesn't take himself too seriously and he knows how to make good cocktails and enjoy the small things in life. Michael, stop it! Move on! <laughs> uh, so, let's make some spiked apple cider uh, to enjoy with our Thomas the turkey friend. Thomas the tank turkey. Thomas the tank turkey. That sounds terrible. He's adorable. Also, I love that this is a cocktail that people who don't enjoy alcohol can have as well. Because you don't have to spike it. You could just have hot cider. A mulled cider. It's, it's a larger recipe. It's a, it's a larger serving, typically. Uh, just because of the stuff that's involved, it, it requires more ingredients. And I don't have time. I don't have time. I need it fast and easy. Like a lot of things in my life, I need it fast and easy. You're going to be starting from a non-alcoholic uh, apple cider, which is really more of a, a less processed apple juice. I got that. I have a grocery store. I got that. I got it. It's right here. Um, I'm going to start by heating um, my cider. You have to heat it? Am I going to have to use the stove? Things don't go well when I use the stove, Greg. I'm like a child. I shouldn't be using the stove, Greg. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this lemon and I'm going to slice it. What I really just want is like one slice of lemon, about a quarter inch thick. How did I arrive at this recipe? I don't know. So we're not adding in lemon juice. We're just adding in a slice of a lemon. So we're not adding in a new component. We're just flavoring the apple cider that's already in the pot. Because when you boil it, you're going to get the flavors. Okay, okay, I'm learning. For me, the secret ingredient is a star anise pod. This has got a very licorice flavor. A what? There are spices I've literally never heard of. <laughs> and I'm going to take one clove. Um, clove is optional, for sure. Uh, one clove? Are these spices doing anything, Greg? Or are we getting meticulous here? I don't want this to boil. I just want to get it simmering. There is an argument. Okay, Michael, so don't forget about it on the stove, okay? It's not supposed to boil. It's supposed to simmer. Yeah, that tastes like what I want that to taste like. How do you know? I have real questions for people that could just taste something and know a huge difference. Can you really taste like minor details in spices? Does my mouth just suck? <laughs> it definitely does, but that's not what I mean. Is everyone else impressive or am I just extremely inadequate? Um, and I'm going to put two ounces of Four Roses single barrel in the- That's a great measurement. I'm gonna probably use a <laughs> Less expensive bourbon because that's what I have. As far as the good bourbons go, this is one of the best buys on the market. I also understand why he's using this measuring tool because probably aesthetically for the video, it makes sense. But in real life, in practicality, I will not be doing that because that is a waste of time. I'm just gonna hold it upside down and count to four. I'm gonna hold my strainer here because if that lemon or something drops in, you don't need a strainer for- look, Greg, come on, Greg. You don't need a strainer to prevent a whole lemon wheel from falling in the pot, Greg. If it falls in, just take it out with your fingers. It's very easy to block, Greg. Calm down. <laughs> a little bit of trouble. I'm just gonna pour that right up. That just makes it look fancier. When you say you have to strain something, it makes it look fancy. It's apple cider, Greg. Uh, and I like to garnish this now with a stick there of cinnamon. Gee whiz, I wish I had real long ones. Gee whiz. I'm happy he used a cinnamon stick instead of cinnamon powder. And don't worry, it doesn't need to stick out. In fact, I'd rather it be submerged. You can garnish it with a lemon wheel instead. This way, the cinnamon stick will be flavoring it underneath the cocktail as you drink it. But if you want to embellish it, uh, I think garnishing this with a lemon wheel. What did I say? Me and Greg, we like this. And then I even will float another bit of this star anise. That's what that is? That's the anus? Ah! I know it's anise. But it's a star pepper that's called anus? <laughs> I'm a child. I'm a five year old. A star anise. We all know the joke I'm thinking. We all know what I'm thinking. Like, I don't even need to say it. There is a pepper called anise that is shaped like a star. There has to be a god because that shit is too funny. And now. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. First off, that's delicious. Is it Greg? We're about to fucking find out. <laughs> Let's go. I'm gonna go boil the apple cider. Okay, it's on the stove. Okay, so get out of here, fly. And I got the star anise and clove, which is literally just like the butthole and dingleberry of spices. So I'm gonna put one of each in the pot to boil along with the apple cider. There is so much getting up in this video. And I don't have a glass mug, but I do have this nice glass that I will be using instead. Let me go ahead and cut a lemon wheel and throw that in the pot to for, oh shit, I almost, oh shit, I almost dropped it. I'm gonna go ahead and add this to the apple cider while it simmers to flavor it with the spices. While that continues to heat up, I'm gonna cut another 
lemon wheel to garnish the cocktail when it's ready. And I know he used fancy bourbon on how to drink, but I'm gonna go ahead and use bullet because I'm a cheap date. Not too cheap, but cheap enough. Now in the video, he uses this tool to measure out two ounces. We're not gonna do that with this one. We're gonna do what I know how to do and get our pour spout and count to four. One, two, three, four. Okay, two ounces. Wasn't that easy? Okay, let me check on my stuff before it burns on the stove. Jesus Christ. Everything is fine. Everything's fine. Everything's, oh my God, I almost fell. Oh my God, I almost fell with this boiling thing. Okay. It smells really, really fucking good. I went ahead and got a ladle because I don't trust myself to pour this in straight from the pot. And you're just gonna fill it up into your drink, pouring it right over your bourbon to mix it up. Three ladles should be just enough. Add a butthole spice to float with a lemon wheel garnish. Bitch, shuck my dick. And girls, there she is. Ain't she pretty? <laughs> I'm gonna put this whole lemon right in there. Ow, son of a bitch, it burned. The garnish did its job. Now I wanna actually taste it. <coughs> it's good. <coughs> oh, it went down my throat the wrong way. <coughs> it was delicious. <coughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> let me do that again. I need, let me do that more sexy. One second. Take two. <laughs> Sorry. That is fucking awesome. This is a fucking awesome drink. It's so easy and so classic. How to drink, you know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> Holy shit. Are these drinks super complicated or anything overly impressive? No, but cocktails don't need to be. In my opinion, that's really not what makes drinking so enjoyable. Having a cocktail should be easy, stress relieving, and relaxing. Making the drink shouldn't stress you out. It should be relatively easy to produce a great outcome. We just did two great examples right here. In the comments down below, let me know which one of these cocktails you would prefer to try. Which one do you think is better for your personal taste? Also, be sure to go over to How To Drink and say Mike said, hey. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and subscribe for future videos. I put them out weekly, usually on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but sometimes I'm late, just like your mom. And if you would like to see more content, don't forget I have a podcast with Mac Does It, Messy with Mac and Mike. We go live every Wednesday. And what did you guys think about this video? Would you like to see me attempt to make other bartenders cocktails more often? Maybe some I haven't tried yet. Maybe some more from How To Drink. Let me know in the comments below or feel free to send them to me on social media. Any bartender or fun drink recipe you see, just send it to me anywhere on social media. You can find me everywhere at MikeMGTV. Damn, this is good. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I'm MikeMGTV and you're fucking welcome.